Hello friends, thank you for watching this video. I'm Muhammad, and today what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be seeing what's new in .NET Aspire Preview 2. We're gonna be taking a look at the blog post that they have released, and then what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be taking a look at the application that we have created previously, and updating it so we can take full advantage of the new features, and we can do a, some comparison between the old functionality and the new functionality. So let's get started. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to go to the blog post that has been released late uh, of last year. And with this blog post, we can see here that the new release has provided a lot of new enhancements, which is specifically going to be on the dashboard, hosting and orchestration, components, deployment, and Dapper. What we're going to be doing, because this is the only going to be components that we're going to having, is we're going to be focusing on the dashboard and hosting orchestration. As well, we're going to be taking a look at those components, although we did not implement them yet. So we can see here that they're giving us a bit more information of how we can actually uh, update the latest version. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open my terminal and I'm going to follow the same command as they have provided here. So first of all, we need to make sure that I have the latest version of the .NET 8 SDK. So I'm going to put .NET dash dash version. And you can see here I'm running on 8.0.100, which is perfect. Then I'm going to put .NET workload update. Uh, let's put it as sudo. Perfect. We can see here that the .NET Aspire Preview 2 is being installed, and this is exactly what we need. I already had a Preview 1, but now we're updating to Preview 2. And if we take a look here, we can see that it's actually scanning all of the different packages and workloads and updating it for me, which is great. Let's give it a few minutes until it finish. A few moments later. Okay, perfect. We can see here now we got successfully updated the latest version of .NET Aspire. So now what we're going to be doing is we're going to put .NET workload install Aspire. And let's make this bigger. So just in case it wasn't clear before, the first command that we have done, it was sudo workload update, .NET workload update. And now what we're doing is we need to install Aspire again. So I'm just going to put sudo again. It might say that it has already been installed for preview one, but that's okay. This is what they say here in the note. Okay, perfect. Now everything is uh, completed and everything is running. What, let, let us go to my current application. Let me open it up. And before we actually update this application to the latest version, I'm just gonna run it. So I'm just gonna put clear and I'm gonna put .NET run. So now that my application is running on this port, let me just take it. And I'm going to open it uh, in the web browser here. Perfect. So now inside my web browser, we can see that we have the familiar uh, .NET Aspire uh, dashboard from the previous release. We can see here that we still have our environment variable. We can see all of the logs for our application. We can switch between front end and back end. If I want to actually execute my uh, endpoints, we can see here that I can see my uh, uh, client application running. I can go to drivers. We can see it's actually pulling the information through the API. And all of this configuration is actually being handled by Aspire. The service discovery for my application is being handled from Aspire. I'm not doing any of the work manually here. All I'm doing is, let's go back to the source code. All I'm doing is inside my app host, I'm actually uh, bundling up the projects. I'm basically creating dependencies between each other and I'm letting Aspire handle all of the configuration between the two. So this is basically what currently exists within version one. So let's go back to the release and let's see what's new. So here they're telling us how we can update existing application. We're gonna get to this later on, uh, but let us see first the new changes that has been. So we can see here there's a lot of new uh, dashboard updates and we can see that the combined views for resources and console logs. So let's go to this and let's see how currently it is. So currently inside logs, we can see we have projects, we have containers. Inside the projects here, we'll basically, we have to choose which is the front end and which is the front uh, with the back end. And here, basically, what they have done is they, they have combined the resources and the console view, and basically, we can filter through them, which is really good. And now it has allowed us to use any resources that we need in order for us to see it. Perfect. Now, if we take a look here, we can see it's already been straightforward enough, but maybe they have introduced some new changes. Let's see other what type of other enhancements. We can see here that the dockable pane is, uh, has been introduced. So let's see this video. So we can see here that now it has a more of a streamlined approach to see this because previously if we take a look at this right now we can see it's a bit hard to see all of this so if we go to projects click on environment we can see it's now it's a more of a pop-up and if you try to see this through like a tablet or a screen which does have a bit of resolution it's going to be a bit hard to see so this is really good 
And something that I'm really excited for is going to be the structured logs. Because currently, if we go to logs here, uh, let's say structured, we can see here that within all of these structured logs, if we are going to click on view details, we can see here that there is no way we can actually organize these logs together. But with the new release, we're going to have the category where we can actually categorize all of these logs together and we'll be able to actually filter the logs based on the category which is really exciting and it makes it really easy to actually go through the entire list of logs so right now we can take a look there's a lot of logs and i just ran the application uh, quickly so i'm just going to put here test test driver let's say 22 and year 2000 and save driver we can see it worked and we can see the log has been populated so we can see here the logs can uh, increase incrementally and having the capability to categorize them and go through them like that it's going to be really useful there is more enhancement about how we can actually trace and here we can see that we can actually utilize the names rather than utilizing the uh, url so now to the fun part rather than only visual we can see there's a lot of updates on the hosting and uh, orchestrating updates. So we can see here that now, as you can see, we can actually configure the launch event where, for any of the Docker container that we are currently utilizing, which is really exciting. Before it wasn't, uh, it was a bit complicated to do this. Service discovery has been updated as well. So now we can have service discovery between all of the different resources. We can even now add the uh, projects, uh, adding path to them, which is which is a bit more flexible than we currently have is basically we have to add them to the solution and refer to them from there. And there's more enhancement regarding the support of new languages like Node.js and there's a new connectors as well for MySQL as well. There's a lot of new components updates. So these are the main new functionalities that has uh, came into place. Now let's see how we can actually update our current uh, application and to take full advantage of this. So all I'm going to be doing right now to update this, I'm going to go to my solution here and I'm going to stop this from running. I'm going to go first to app host and I'm going to click on edit CS proj. And as you can see from CS proj, I'm using the Aspire here preview one. So I need to make sure that I'm updating this to the latest one. So I'm going to go back to my resource and I'm going to copy the latest version here. Copy. And I'm going to update this to utilize preview two. Perfect. I'm going to save this and I'm going to go to service default as well. Do the same thing. Edit. I did see Asproj, go a bit down. Well, that's surprising, it's not here, which is which is good. But what I need to do also, I need to update all of the packages. So I'm just gonna click on add. And uh, let's see, where is NuGet package manager? Let's see the packages that we have. Okay, so up in telemetry, there's an update to it. All of these up, needs to be updated. So let's update them. So let's start with this update. Update, upgrade, upgrade, and upgrade. Okay, perfect. So now that has been updated, let's see if there's anything else that we need to do. So we can see everything here is updated. A service discovery extension. Let's see if this is the latest one. So I'm just going to copy this. Go to my web browser and here I'm just going to type nuget and put this here and then we can see the where is the nuget package. This is not what I want. I need the service discovery extension. And we can see here the service discovery has been updated to version to preview 2. So let's make sure that we take the latest one. I'm going to go to versions. I'm just going to copy this. So now inside my code here i need to make sure that this is updated to the latest one okay perfect so now that i have done this let's see if there's anything else regarding my service default that i missed this is a, sorry at my app host no that's it so let us do a quick build so i'm gonna come here and put dot not build perfect now it's running i'm gonna put dot not run we can see it's also running on the same port. So let's go back to my web browser and I'm going to come here. We can see it disconnected. So I'm just going to click on retry and we can see it already started to work. You can see the entire structure even has changed from the previous menu. And here we can see, first of all, if we click on view, we can see now it's actually taking us directly to the 
log section, the environment variable is not a pop-up anymore. We can see it's being embedded directly into um, like a tab. We can open it up and close it. Let's see the metrics. Let's put for backend. We can see a similar, almost similar structure. Let's go to traces. And within the traces now, we can see that everything is still working. Structured log, this is really important. So we can see here that there's a problem with HTTPS. That's completely fine. If I click here within the view, if I go a bit down, we can see that everything is basically has been updated to the preview two version. So we can see here that this update is basically more of a stability and some new feature that has been implemented on the UI and how it's actually been utilizing as well for the hosting or orchestration. Uh, I feel there's gonna be a lot more functionalities being added down the road, but this is a very welcome upgrade. And I highly suggest if you started working with Aspire to go to the latest version and uh, update from there. Uh, the only thing which is uh, really now is exciting me, if we go to the connectors, which has been also been updated. Let's go down here. So now there is a MySQL connector, which is, has been released as well as support for MongoDB. And this is really good for uh, because we have now support for more non-SQL databases. And if we go to my uh, to the SQL connector library, so let me open this here. If we take a look at the documentation for .NET Aspire and we take a look at the databases, we can see here currently we have support for Postgres, we have support for SQL Server and Azure Cosmos DB, which is also a non-SQL database. Now with the new release, we have support for MySQL and MongoDB, which is really exciting because we are expanding our support reach. I would like to see if there's a support for uh, SQLite because that's really interesting as well because a lot of smaller applications utilize SQLite rather than relying on a big uh, database server. But that's something we might uh, need to see. And uh, if you'd like me to do a video about how to utilize any of this, please let me know and I'll make sure to cover them. But in general, this update is uh, very much welcome. And uh, as you can see, it has streamlined more of the UI and the resource for our application. I hope this video was helpful. I just thought to share my thoughts about this new release and uh, maybe it will help you over your own journey within Aspire. If you have any questions, please make sure you put them in the comments down below and have a great day.